What up everyone? Today I'm going to be reviewing Atsushi Kaneko's Death Co. But before we get into Death Co the series, a little bit about Atsushi Kaneko. Um, if you read Japanese manga in English, then you might know him from his famous 2005 series Bambi and Her Pink Gun, which was originally released in 98 in Japanese, but eventually made its way into English print. Um, for those people who are manga fans here in Japan, he's probably most well known for Soil because it was made into a Japanese TV drama. Also, I know that Soil was translated into French, I think Italian as well, so it's a pretty popular series in that part of Europe as well. But as far as the English goes, Bambi and Her Pink Gun was very 90s and punk rock at the time, and is really uh, uh, kind of you know his big first big work that he released that really got got him famous um if you watched some of my reviews before i did do a short review of his release r which was just a bunch of a collection of nine short stories so you can go back and check that out in the links but uh at any rate um that's what he's most famous for um, as far as his art style goes, Atsushi Kaneko is a self-proclaimed um, big fan of that American lowbrow art culture. You know, Daniel Close, Coop, Robert Williams, uh, Charles Burns, and these kinds of guys. And it's really reflected in his art style. At the same time, there's a lot of heavily, heavily influenced, uh, not just Western, but Japanese elements as well. So it's a quite a meld of both the Japanese style uh, manga and almost American style comic slash lowbrow art. Um, as far as uh, Deathco goes, Deathco, I mean, the you would think Deathco, some death company or something like that, but no, Deathco is the little girl, our main protagonist in the story. Maybe this is a better, this is what she looks like. I'm throwing some stuff up on the screen as well. Um, Deathco is emo as hell, she's depressed, she's dark. She's brooding, and she is an assassin. She works for a mysterious organization called the Guild, and this the Guild puts hits out on people. However, when they put a hit out on someone, they put it out, they send it out to a huge number of assassins, and including Deathco. So all the assassins clamor to get the kill because they want to get the rewards or the money that's being offered by this mysterious guild organization. And uh, Deathco happens to be one of the top killers, of course. As far as the other assassins go, it's pretty cool. All of them are in cosplay. Let's take a look at the stills on the screen. Um, imagine something like Cha-Cha and Hazel from Umbrella Academy, but with much bigger cosplay budgets and on meth and poppers, something like that. They're wild, really wild characters, uh, clowns, uh, rockabilly greasers, cheerleaders, uh, all kinds of different uh, furries and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. Um, but uh, so everyone's out clamoring to get kills for the guild. Mm. Deathco herself, She's not only a killer assassin, but she's, like I said, she's also dark and brooding. Uh, when she's not killing, she gets super depressed. So depressed, in fact, that a little teeny cloud follows her around, raining acid, toxic rain on top of her head. And she just never smiles. She's also got like a pet bat with these like skinny little long legs that follows her around. And she's just depressed as hell, walking through traffic, kind of a what you would expect um, from Atsushi Kaneko. One thing about Atsushi Kaneko's protagonist, main protagonist is always like one person against the world. It was the same with Bambi and her pink gun. It's Bambi and Pampy on the road, a bunch of hitmen after them trying to kill them. In this, it is Deathco trying to get kills, but at the same time battling all of these other rival assassins who are trying to kill each other so that they can get the kill. And also everyone wants to be a top assassin, of course, or something like that going on. And um, yeah. Further, Deathco isn't alone. There's also Madam M, who is an ex-assassin, and then the driver slash butler Lee. So they are also an integral part of the story. 
in there and there. But uh, the main character, of course, is Death Co. and her journey in this weird, psychedelic, uh, mis dark, shadowy world that Atsushi Kaneko has created for us. Um, one way he does that is everything's black and white. Um, there's an awesome documentary on him. It's about 30 minutes long. It was put out by Archipel. They do some cool video documentary stuff and uh, on Japanese manga cop, but also also on other topics as well. So check them out. They're big. Um, but at the same time, um, I'll put that link down below. So if you want to learn more about Atsushi Kaneko, I remember in the interview him talking about using his Medibank software to do the drawing, do the illustrations for Deathco. And for example, to get her crazy contrasted hair and all this kind of dark kind of world that he's creating, he'll go over everything really heavy in black and he'll go over it in white and then he'll layer again in black, layer again in white. And by repeating this process, he can get all these cool shadows and this cool contrast, which is indicative of his style, actually. Um, this was these seven volumes were released between 2014 and 2018, which is why I really wanted to read it and review it because I'm sure it's going to be translated into English officially here soon because it's just such a fun, awesome title. And it's not too big of a series. It ends after seven. There's a clear ending to it. So it's not like one of these long series that drag on and on and on and just are suddenly cut off or some series that just drag on and on and just never end. So that's one thing I like. To, I like to have an end to my stories. You know, it's fun. Um, what else can we say about Death Co? I don't want to give any spoilers or give too much away as far as like the contents of the story, but ultra violent, ultra dark, a little bit 90s emo. Uh, again, lowbrow art combined with uh, Japanese elements. Um, Death Coat's actually been one of my favorite reads of this year. So I hope that it's translated into English soon, and I hope you guys get to enjoy it as well. Um, so Death Co. Against the World. Tetsuka, who's really famous. I mean, the most recent Atsushi Kaneko thing is Search and Destroy, this, which I haven't read yet, but I'm going to read next after I finish some other stuff. And uh, it's based on Tetsuka's Dororo series. So he is a big, he was heavily influenced by a lot of the early uh, 1970s and 80s uh, Japanese mangaka as well. And again, check out that documentary in the links below. It's really good as far as just hearing directly from Atsushi Kaneko how he develops his, developed his style and how he goes through the process of putting a story together. One other cool thing about Death Co. and all of his works is the way that he frames everything. He said that he never formally learned how to frame manga when he was learning how to draw manga. He was really into film initially, and he thought that he'd be working in film, be a director or do something along those lines. And so when he would watch, when he started writing manga, when he would watch movies, he would think to himself, oh, how could I frame that in a manga? So when he started writing manga, he adapted that kind of, to, he gives the reference of 2001 Space Odyssey, like scene to scene to scene, cut, 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 close-ups, really tight close-ups, and then really stretched out far scenes. And he kind of thinks about his manga as a movie when he's doing the framing, and that makes it like really action-packed, especially the fight scenes and the assassin, you know, guild missions and stuff like that so it's a fun read um i'll tell you more about search and destroy after i finish reading that but um yeah atsushi kaneko's death go check it out um coming up in the future i'm going to be doing some more reviews i know it's hard for me to get them out because to be honest with you i read everything in japanese my Japanese reading is not as fast as my English reading, obviously, but I really like to go through a series and finish it before I review anything. I hate going through and reviewing something in the middle because uh, what if there's an awesome twist at the end or something I can kind of hint to without giving a spoiler away? I will have had to have read it first um, if I haven't read it first. Right now I'm reading uh, Umez, Umezu Kazuo, and I'm just finishing up this four-part series called in English it would be the God's left hand and the devil's right hand 
right? And uh, I'm on four right now, and it's a four-part series. So maybe you know the English release of his was uh, Drifting Classroom, I think, in English, which is an awesome one as well. So if you want to learn a little about Umezu before I tell you about him, go pick that up. And I got some other stuff like DS Police, um, um, Inuki Kaneko, we're going to get into. And uh, again, yeah, I'll try to get these out every week. Um, thanks a lot for watching. Be sure that you hit like and subscribe if you like these reviews. Um, I noticed like I, people kind of like my city walks, cruising around Koenji, manga hunting, going to art shows and stuff like that. So if I can get enough subscribers to be able to do live videos next year, then I want to be able to do that and just do live videos. It'll be more fun. But until then, I'll keep doing them like this. And if you have any suggestions, pop them in the comments below. All right, thanks guys. Matane.